tomorrow at our meeting where we have Commissioner Segret, Senator Stump, Education Minnesota, myself, and other stakeholders and legislators. We're trying to get consensus on race to the top. So to have the governor uh, poking the unions in the eye one more time when that's where we lost most points is not helpful. tenure every five years. He reiterated the form of uh, coupon that he's been proposing that is probably not acceptable. You know, some of us, uh, Senator Stump and I, have been kind of reeling in uh, Education Minnesota, trying to woo them to the table to actually compromise on some of these things. So when you're trying to do that, and you, you all know if you are anglers, if you have a fish that's nibbling, is not the time to jerk the line away like the governor just did from getting Education Minnesota to help out with this money that we need for our kids. It's not a lot of money. It's a long shot that we would get it. But it's essential that we have consensus in our state with all the players if we're going to get it. And this press conference that the governor had, like he did when he raced around the state, when we first found out we did not get raised to the top is not the best thing to do when we're trying to achieve consensus. Are there questions? Well, right, right. Right. He, didn't, he didn't really go after the union too much other than when he was asked a question about them. I, I thought he was actually, you know, kind of conciliatory. Uh, well, Tom, this was a, um, a subtle poke in the eye. You know, when he raced around the state, that was a, a frontal attack. But this time he put the same charts up there behind him with which he used to bonk him over the head last week. So it seems to me this was a needle, but it was the same message that he has to have his ideas and the union is not going to support ending tenure and or else uh, he, he has the power to not submit an application. So having the press conference with the same set of facts when we're trying to get the union to the table with compromise, and I still think we can do that, um, was not helpful. So, uh, do you think that this is it, basically the same set of things he's proposed before that nobody has approved? So. This is the same set of uh, things that the governor has proposed before. And um, so it was just redundant to another poke and not helpful when the meeting is tomorrow to get consensus. So does this make you think whatever you come to a conclusion on tomorrow is not going to get his support in the end or how are you feeling about that? Well the governor always asks for everything he wants and he asks for it his way but in the end when we do have a compromise that I still think we can get then we will see if he really wants something or if he just has a message that he wants to make and it involves uh, bashing, or does he want this money for the kids? We'll find out. How about this list, point that which, which stands the best chance of actually making it through the, the process? I think to have some sort of, um, of a baseline floor for QCOMP, so you do have to involve student test scores, is something, if it's done right, we have a possibility of getting consensus. And I think that alternative uh, teacher licensure if we listen hard to Education Minnesota, I think they will come up with some ideas that will help us with compromise in those areas. And then if we get them to sign on, you know, all three of those things, I think, puts us in a good spot to get that money. What about the, what about the uh, contention that forward thinking states are all racing by Minnesota and these are all things that are going to happen and we're either going to be a leader or a, a laggard? Minnesota's always been a leader on reform up until Governor Plenty got here. And I'll tell you why. In order to pass reform, you have to ease it down with pudding or applesauce, and that's called money. The governor always wants to have his reform pills, some of which I support, but he doesn't want to put any pudding or applesauce in the spoon, and that makes it very hard to pass reforms with people, many in the system, who do like the status quo. Madam Chair, the 35% uh, of teacher evaluation, principal evaluation, the tenure portions, do those have any possibility of uh, passing in any way, shape, or form? You know, that's one area where the governor's come down a little bit. He wanted over 50% roll for test scores. Now he's down to 35. The average, according to the uh, state auditor, legislative auditor, is 25%. Uh, so I think that's where I'm saying I think we have some room for discussion.
session. If we make it clear that we do it right, not as high as the governor wants, but we don't need to be as low as 5 or 10 percent, as some districts have negotiated their coupon. What's the work product going to be tomorrow? Are you going to come out with a, a blueprint or a bill, or what, what are you actually going to come out, what's going to come out of tomorrow's meeting? We're looking for a bill later. Tomorrow is to talk. We just want to focus on these bones of contention, because if you, why go through line by line the governor's bill if you can't get past those bones of contention? Let's hit it squarely on the bones of contention. Alternative teacher licensure, the type of coupon, what, how can we get the best teachers in the hardest schools? That's where we need to spend our time, and that will be the most fruitful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.